ACW is sponsored by Jabadi. Self care through skin care. Jabadi is for everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to ACW Podcast. Thank you for joining us again. I am Robin Gabriel Parson, your host, and our co-host today is Dr. Gary Gabriel, life science expert. Yes, he's back again with some amazing, valuable information. And our topic today is heart health awareness. Yes, we're going to end our month of heart health with Dr. Gabriel. And today we're going to focus on education, heart health and education. In terms of when it comes to the function of the heart, uh, we will be highlighting how stress affects the heart. Uh, We'll also address how poor nutrition weakens the heart and how you can also heal the heart through just self-care experiences. So today we have a lot to share with you and thank you for joining us again. And thank you, Dr. Gabriel, for being here again. It's always a joy to have you here. Um, Thank you for joining us. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Glad to be here. Glad to be here talking about this topic and hopefully we can provide some information that can help people. That's kind of like what we're all about. You know, we, we, uh, Jabadi is being a chief scientific officer of about Jabadi. We, we, we design products that have, that are scientifically derived. We take a lot of the formulations from the scientific literature. And then we want to kind of take what we know in the scientific literature on not only what we put on the outside of our bodies, but what also we put on the inside of our bodies. Yes. Now, Dr. Gabriel, today, as a life science expert and someone that knows the whole body and how it functions, let's talk about this organ. Um, please explain to our audience the most important, this most important organ in our body, the heart. How does it function? What is it, so, so deep and strategic type of organ? Please explain to us more about the heart. Well, <clears throat> the whole purpose of the heart is to really to circulate blood, but more on a, on a, um, from a biological standpoint, uh, the, the chemical components of blood itself, nu- nutrient distribution throughout the body, uh, oxygen distribution throughout the body. Uh, the the um, look at it, if you look at it, similar analogous to, a, to an automobile um, is, is when you look at the heart, the heart is like that. It's like the distributor and basically it has a, has vasculature, major vasculature, um, left and right ventricles coming from the heart, and that and that information, that blood flow goes throughout uh, our extensive vascular system, and it feeds all of our organs. Um, we we could not live and not have nutrient flow and oxygen flow to every part of our body. Um, and, and even from the standpoint of getting hydration, water through to every part of our system, that's what the heart does essentially. And when without the heart, you 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 literally there's no survival uh, without without that organ functioning, um, and that's connected to your vascular system. Yes, thank you for that. You're right. Without the heart, there's no life. So now. In reference to uh, the importance of the heart, you pretty much explain it. You know, without the mm-hmm. heart, nothing else can really function. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I find that to be very interesting because, you know, we do a lot with our heart. You know, we make decisions with our heart. We love with our heart. So it's a very important organ. Now, in reference to heart health, do genetics play a very important role when it comes to heart disease? Because that's what I really want to talk how certain diseases affect our heart. So does genetic uh, have a, well, absolutely. plays a role? Uh, yeah, ab- absolutely, genetic. And in fact, if you look at every disease that, that we face, uh, most diseases that we face, there's some genetic component. Um, uh, Afro-Americans, for instance, um, within the heart, if you look at one of the diseases that affects a- Afro-Americans disproportionately, is a, a, a hypercardiomyopathy. And hi- hypercardiomyopathy is a disease that is really like an inflammation of the heart, the heart muscles, which affect, which affect blood flow. Um, from a genetic standpoint, there was a Harvard study that showed that there are about eight um, mutations in 
the DNA of Afro-Americans. And when those eight mutations uh, show up, they actually show up at higher levels in Afro-Americans. And because they show up at higher levels in Afro-Americans, that puts them at higher risk for disease such as hypercardiomyopathy. And there are other diseases that are that are that can um, affect affect the heart and heart arrhythmias. Um, looking at uh, how that affects that, you can have a genetic component associated with that. So those are two small examples. For the what the question, but the answer to your question is yes. There, there's a genetic factor that affects the cardiovascular system and and how the heart works. Uh, there's, there's also the major disease of, of diabetes. Diabetes is a cardiovascular disease. And so what diabetes is, it's, it basically is a, 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 de a degenerative disease, a progressively degenerative disease associated with your vascular system. What happens is that it's the silent killer. So what happens is that over time, you, you actually end up with um, the death or, or the, or the death or the apoptosis of your, your vasculature. So the vasculature is very important in feeding and flowing blood to all your major organs. That's why in, in people that are chronic diabetics, you start to see organ failure because what happens is, you know, you start to see loss of eyesight. There, there's neuropathy, a nerve pain, uh, there's amputations, there's eye pain, there's skin, you have skin lesions. Uh, a lot of that occurs because those parts of the body, all those major organs are not getting proper blood flow. And what's happening is that you're getting the death of tiny micro vessels, micro cardio vessels that feed blood to those organs. Those, those, uh, that vasculature is dying. And because it's dying, uh, that the organ is dying. So one of the things that, that, that um, and, that's, and that's why it's called the silent killer with diabetes, it, it progresses over years and years and years, and then it becomes, an, it becomes a chronic state. So you know, that can be, diabetes can be a genetic, a genetic component of diabetes, particularly type one diabetes, uh, you know, where, you're, where you're looking at uh, the, pan the pancreas no longer being able to produce insulin and you, you're not getting uh, glucose control. And so uh, you can actually have uh, huge complications in that form of disease affecting the vasculature. And so you can have loss of eyesight, as I mentioned, you can have loss of limbs and all that is really focused around the death of your vascular system or your blood flow. So, so the answer to the question is yes, there's a genetic component. Uh, and there are things that, we, that we're doing that are non-genetic that can, that can affect uh, our vasculature. So you, know, you mentioned somewhere in your introduction looking at uh, the foods we eat. Uh, it is not just foods. foods. Foods are one thing. But another thing I wanted to mention is, is on that, on that aspect is um, um, things, things such as our, our, uh, the, the, not just the food that we eat, but also uh, looking at uh, what we do in terms of physical activity. That's another, that's another component. So that can, that can contribute to things like coronary heart disease. If we if we're not active or fit, or we lead, or we lead a, a, a sedentary lifestyle, um, you can you can really really up your health risk uh, by not having physical activity, and you can see very high rates of cardiovascular disease based on not having physical activity. Number one, and then two, not eating properly. So. Uh, that, that's kind of like an outline of, of what of genetically, how, how cardiovascular disease can affect us. And then outside of the genetics, it's the, it's the things that we eat, the things that we do that can affect uh, cardiovascular disease. Thank you for that. And, and, and Dr. Gabriel, what I also find very interesting you brought up is the silent killer because, and what I, I, I'm, 
focusing on or just want to bring to the audience attention is that you can actually walk around through your life and have heart disease and not know it. So when you say silent killer, um, is it, it's very important that, again, we go back to visiting your doctor, having these important checkups. And we've been talking about this throughout our po- podcast um, in reference to physical activity, eating right. And it's such a constant, constant narrative that, you know, those two little important things could really help enhance your life and really mm-hmm. help your body to become a lot healthier. So um, that silent killer is, is very interesting. And um, I hope the listeners are, are paying attention because again, it could be something you have and you don't even know. Um, so mm-hmm. thank you for that, Dr. Gabriel. Now let's yep. talk about stress and, and, and heart health. Stress plays another role. Please elaborate on that. Yeah, stress. This, this uh, alludes to some other discussions that we had in, in the past. You know, you have a number of stress hormones that that can be um, generated when you're under stress conditions. One of the major ones that we've been talking about in several different videos discussion is cortisol. Uh, cort- cortisol can actually um, raise your glucose levels when excess glucose can then go into uh, greater fat metabolism, which can then allow for um, greater levels of weight gain and obesity. And when you start looking at um, fat metabolism and looking at obesity, obesity alone can, can allow for uh, cardiovascular uh, problems and cardiovascular risk. So you, you can look at higher levels of, of uh, lipids in the blood, that can lead to high levels of uh, low density lipoproteins, that's LDL, which is which really carries a lot of your bad cholesterol. Um, and then and then that bad cholesterol is really can be responsible for for contributing to things like atherosclerosis, which is really the beginning of you know, the formation of plaques, plaque um, within the blood vessels. And once you start to form plaque in the blood vessels, you start to get a constriction um, in the blood vessel. And so which slows down the blood flow, uh, which again, it affects your cardiovascular and, and, and it affects so many different things about uh, getting proper blood flow to the organs. And then you can, and, it, and at that point, it's, it's a sort of a snowball effect on, on down spiraling your health. Uh, by by looking at the the effect of stress, so so the key is managing stress is really a biological activity. The better you can manage stress, the better you can manage those stress hormones, and those stress mo- hormones keeping those stress hormones from kicking off a cascade of bad events, such as, for instance, um, uh, um, looking at uh, affecting things like obesity. And, and, and greater fat metabolism and that fat metabolism affecting, uh, giving you a higher cardiovascular risk factor for, for your lifestyle. So, so, so yes, handling, handling the, the stress hormone is a key factor in handling stress. And, and again, uh, it, it, it's, it, it's the combination of food and activity. It's what you eat and it's your movement. Uh, so when we talk about what you eat, it's also the quantity. So you, you, you literally have to uh, eat less and move more. And what you eat has to be of high quality to affect, to affect and lower your cardiovascular risk. Uh, so what, the, what does that even mean? Uh, that means, for instance, eating more green vegetables, or lowering your carb intake or your processed food intake. Um, From a physical standpoint, putting in about anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes of physical exercise per day of any kind, walking, it's even been shown that just walking at a moderate pace has health benefits Um, and and looking at a reduction of body weight, reducing your blood pressure, 
uh, reducing the bad cholesterol, the LDLs, increasing the good cholesterol or the uh, high density lipoproteins, uh, that's the good cholesterol. Increasing insulin sensitivity, which again, clears out your glucose levels such that you're not leading to uh, favoring uh, obesity. So again, those are, those are some, those are some, 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 uh, have some examples of lowering your cardiovascular risk uh, by the combination of activity and what you eat. Thank you, thank you. And, and thank you for bringing that food education into the conversation because again, uh, throughout our whole podcast, I, I keep hearing the same thing in reps to what we eat, uh, being active and hoping that, you know, listeners catch on that we really do need to focus on what we are eating. And thank you for adding to the fact that, yes, we do need to eat more vegetables. We do need to eat more fruit, drink more water, uh, foods less and fat. And Interesting enough, next month, we will talk about nutrition and we're going to really target those foods that you should be eating to making sure you have an appropriate uh, balanced diet. Because um, a lot of times we talk, we tell people, you know, try not to eat so much fat in, in when a lot of people don't yeah. understand what type of fat. So, you know, people think fat might be, oh, would you be fat off with, you know, if you eat chicken or fat that's in the oil, the butter that we use. So thank you for bringing that food um, education into the conversation, because we're definitely going to talk about that, um, how that well, does uh, affect everything. Well, let me, let me also to outline, um, I know we talk about a lot of things and we try to lay things out, but I also like to try to put it in a context that allows us to look at what is it that the little thing that you can do right now. Uh, I always uh, talk about that the way you move forward is to make small steps. And then, and then after that, it's consistency. So, uh, start in a small way. Uh, one of the first things that I think everyone should take inventory of is what's in your um, food cabinet you know, and, you know, look at, just look at, just do a quick inventory of your food cabinet. If there's a lot of, of, of bread, uh, particularly take a look at the ingredients in that bread. Um, a lot of times they will use uh, simple sugars, flour, um, high fructose. Uh, those are the things that you do. If you, if you look at the ingredients and you're seeing those things, when you do an inventory of your food stock, then you want to remove those types of things from your diet. Those are, those are, are what I call a life killing um, food components. And then what you want to be able to do is replace those with, with uh, life giving components. So look for things that have more complex carbohydrates. You can find com complex carbohydrates in, in green vegetables. So if you look at your leafy greens, whether you look at things like kale, kale is a, a really good component that has a lot of, of, of um, trace minerals, fiber, and carbohydrates for you. Um, beets are, or raw beets are, are very, very good. You can take a raw beet, uh, either boil it, uh, you can even microwave it, and, and um, almost like a sweet potato. Um, and, and beets are, are filled with um, fiber that you need, complex fiber. But why is complex fiber even important? It's important because complex fiber allows you to do and maintains a, a, a low glycemic index for you. So if you're diabetic or from a standpoint that you're trying to keep your sugar low and, and, and you're not getting those spikes, those, the, and, and so when you get the, the sugar spikes or you have deficiencies um, from not eating for a little while. And the first thing you, you do is you grab for something sugary. Um, that, that actually is really, really bad. It kills a lot of, of the, your, your stress fighting hormones. Uh, and in men, one of the things, one of the things that's really bad for men is looking at you, you looking at maintaining testosterone levels, high sugar levels, high sugar levels kill testosterone. 
So if you don't know anything else, if you want to keep your testosterone up, keep your vitality up, keep your strength up, uh, really stop eating that eating white bread. Go for more complex carbs and seeds. Um, and that that those that's that's one of the examples of terms of doing an inventory of how are you going to keep cardiovascular health. Um, and, and, and that's a, and that's a key component. I, I couldn't, I can't recommend the first thing you want to do is do an inventory of what's the level of carbohydrate you're taking in. And then secondly, look at what's the other second thing that I can start to do, start to put more raw f- of foods and vegetables into your diet. You know, that's is, like I said, I mentioned kale, Spinach is very, very good. Spinach also has fiber. It has protein in it. So that's a, that's a very, very good source. And it's also a cortisol-lowering food. Did you know that, that's, that spinach can, can, and can also lower the levels of cortisol um, in, in your body and from, from a stress standpoint? So what I do um, on a... On a daily basis to try to try to keep a good hormone, a positive hormone homeostasis level. What I do is I'll, I'll make a, uh, a, I have a neutral bullet, I'm not giving an endorsement of neutral bullet, but you're using blender. Uh, I'll, t- I'll take beets, raw beets. I'll take spinach. Uh, I'll take a little bit of ginger. Did you know that ginger is an anti, it's a natural anti-inflammatory. It's, it's yes. almost like taking taking ibuprofen. So when you ever feel like a bone pain or, or back pain of any kind, uh, drink, drink, uh, drink yourself a, a, a raw ginger drink. In fact, you, you want to make it, uh, get, and ginger is very inexpensive. You go into a supermarket, you can buy a, a little bit of ginger root, maybe two or $3. You take a little bit of ginger root, you take a, a beet. Beet sometimes will cost you, again, two to three bucks, get yourself a bag of spinach and then make yourself a, what I call uh, a raw vegetable shake. You put all that in the blender um, and um, throw in some 100% cranberry juice. Don't use cranberry uh, cocktail. Cranberry cocktail is like drinking Kool-Aid. Can- cranberry juice is uh, 100% cranberry juice is from the cranberry itself. Cranberry also is a cortisol deactivator. It lowers cortisol levels. So take, a, take that, and then I'm gonna throw in another thing for cardiovascular health. In that shake, throw in a little bit of black seed oil. Now, you're like, now what's black seed oil? So black seed, the Egyptians have been taking black seed oil for, for well over 2,000, 3,000 years. And in fact, there's a quote uh, by an Egyptian philosopher that says that, that black seed oil can cure anything but death. That's a, that's, that's, that's a quote. You go and Google it, you'll, <laughs> you'll find it. But that agent, that is a combination. Black seed oil comes from the, comes from the, the uh, oh. Nigella sativa seed, commonly known as black seed. And, and, and it's been used for a whole bunch of ail- ailments for centuries. And the key magical components in black seed oil for cardiovascular health is thymoquinone, uh, thymo di- th- thymohydroquinone, dithymoquinone, thymol, carvacol, uh, nigelamine, nigelacine, nigelidine. And there's 30 other uh, aromatic organic compounds that, that are really anti-inflammatory, wound healing, um, free radical fighting compounds in black seed oil. And what I do is I take a tablespoon of that, throw it into my, um, um, into my, my, my raw shake that I just mentioned, blend it, and I drink that in, I drink that in the morning. That is that will literally stabilize your 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 glucose levels. It will lower your cortisol levels, and it provides a whole host of benefits to your cardiovascular. Now, 
beats, combination of beats, particular beats. The key component in beats is a compound called betanin. Betanin is the whole is responsible for the redness or purpleness of beats. But betanin also stimulates and 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 the breakdown of betanin can form uh, nitric oxide. Nitric oxide opens up the cardiovascular and improves blood flow. And so, you know, for cardiovascular health, um, for organ health, that's something I strongly suggest. So where I'm, where I'm going with all of this is that we started out giving you guys an outline, but now we're on a section of this discussion where we're talking about what is it that you can do? We want to give you advice on things that you can do. So that's the food part of it. The physical part of it, we talked about that. 15 to 25 minutes of any kind of physical activity that gets your heart rate up at least past 100, 120, um, looking at your, uh, your heart rate, your heart rate past 100, 120. When you get up to 140, 130, 140, you're really getting a brisk workout. But at least, at least you should be you should be in the, in the low 100s for some moderate exercise. So we want to be careful. We don't want to overdo it. Uh, we want to make sure we have some kind of activity. So the combination of what you can do, just take that, that, that hormone stabilizing, uh, fiber filled, nutrient filled shake that I told you about and that physical activity and just start with that. Just start with that and see how you feel after one week. Um, and I guarantee you, you will improve how you feel, your energy. And then that consistency will allow you to inventory other things about the food that your food intake and your, and your physical activity. So that's, that's, that's kind of like how I want to kind of bring this whole thing full circle, looking at uh, what is it that um, cardiovascular health, why is it important for us to pay attention to it? And what are some things that we can start doing um, to address how we feel about our, our cardiovascular health. So I hate to be so long-winded, uh, Robin, but I, I just figured it, it just guided me to go down in that, go down that direction. No, no, no. Thank you for that. Thank you for every aspect of what you share from the educational perspective, from the nutrition perspective. Thank you so much. That, that is definitely needed. And we're going to extend the conversation out more about nutrition and really focus, but thank you for that. Um, Something you said earlier, you triggered a thought uh, in reference to um, the physical, the um, nutrition perspective of making sure your heart healthy. But also, I, I want you to also add to the mental, because this is where Jabadi comes in, Jabadi uh, aromatherapy care that you have uh, that really helps people relax. Because again, stress is a physical thing, but it's also a mental thing. So let's talk, talk more about your Jabadi Aroma Therapy, the self-care experience that you can, that can assist you with releasing stress and promoting uh, uh, and healing the heart. Please elaborate on that. Well, right. But that, well, that's how we, that's why we, um, it's one of the reasons why we created the company. The company is, uh, we are a science products company with science-based. Our products are scientifically driven. Uh, we're, we're driven around the whole idea that if you combine um, aromatherapy, which we call uh, olfactory neuroactives, the, 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 the plant oils that we use in that regard, along with um, skin health oils, uh, black seed oil is in all of our products, vitamin E is in all of our products. We use a, a shea butter base, uh, and, and you know all the, 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 the skin uh, repair properties of shea butter. Uh, we, we put that through every department of all of our products. The body butters, we have it in a 48-hour deodorant. Um, we have it in a shave bar. We have it in our adult products. And so at the end of the day, our whole goal is to create products that allow people to connect within themselves and to connect to one another. And so if you can connect within yourself and you can connect with one another through touch and, and what better way to do it with, with, a, with a healthy, nutritious product, which is the Jabadi products. And we believe that we are providing products for skin health, but at the same time, we are alle alleviating aspects of stress through our aromatherapy. And once we 
we look at the the use of our plant medicinals from from the aromatherapy side we are 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 extracting elements of stress which then will lower cortisol levels which then will allow for advances in health and well-being and that's what we're about at jabadi products uh, like i said you can go to our website it's at uh, jabadibody.com and see what we're all about. We have our Facebook. You can see what we're doing and what uh, testimonials from people using our product. Um, and we believe that by making these products, in, and, and as I said a moment ago, allowing people to connect within themselves and between one another, uh, we believe that people can communicate better. And if you can communicate better, you can lower your levels of stress, lower the cortisol levels, and, le and live a healthier life. Thank you, Dr. Gabriel. Listeners, I hope you were able to intake all of that valuable information. And I just want to add to it. I want our listeners to understand that we bring you topics that focus around your health, physically, mentally, and spiritually. So our whole movement is all about wellness. It's all about enhancing your lifestyle and giving you the information and the resources and the tools that can move you forward into that. Remember that new you in the new year? So all of this it's, it's, it's really about that full package of providing what you need to make your life, you know, joyful and really focusing on the optimal health. So, Dr. Gabriel, I, I really appreciate all of your information and we look forward to hearing your uh, research every time you come. So thank you mm -hmm. for joining us again. Um, listeners, he gave you the website earlier, but please repeat it again, Dr. Gabriel, for those yeah. who may not have heard it. Um, please do so. Uh, it's uh, jabadibody.com. That's uh, J A B O D I B O D Y.com. And you can reach us there. We have a talk to us page. All of the um, podcasts from ACW are up there too. So you can go to that website. It's, it's unlike any other place you've been. And, and from the standpoint, it's not just products, it's lifestyle, it's, it's information. It's it's uh we have a science page that talks about the 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 chemical components and the plant oils that we use and why why they affect humans the way they affect humans and those are the same articles we use to formulate a lot of our products so it's information at that website and you can reach out to us and talk to us and we'll talk right back to you. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Gabriel. And thank you listeners for joining us today. As always, please live life with purpose, intention, and love. Until next time, we'll see you later. ACW is presented by Partnerships in Fitness, a fitness and health and wellness consulting group, building strong minds and bodies, and empowering one community at a time. ACW is sponsored by Jabadi. Self-care through skin care. Jabadi is for everybody.